Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis bringing you a new video on our Space Combat prototype. And in this video, I'm going to cover some of the UI elements that I've added. And you can see here that I have a health bar for my player, and I have health bars above all the enemy ships. And every time they take damage, their bar goes down about half, and until basically two shots will kill them. For me, I've added some more health because I basically just have these... Uh, ships following me um, and shooting at me all the time now and you can see once I die I'm actually going to uh, destroy my player and move my camera out of the scene uh, so we can see everything kind of from far away from above and uh, so we're just looking at you know empty space at this point but we'd see the ships flying around if any had still existed um, and again my AI is really dumb it will shoot it does not consider if any of its fellow ships are in the way um, and once I stop this, we're going to see there's a lot of errors because what's happening is I have a reference to my player on all of the um, enemy ships. And when my ship disappears, uh, it throws an error because it's still trying to reference that. So that's something that needs to be cleaned up for sure. Um, but for now, I have it in there. Uh, it doesn't really hurt anything right now, but uh, we do want to clean that up and have a clean exit to our game. So we'll cover that in the next video. But... Let's first jump into how the camera behaves because when the player dies, um, the camera is going to jump into this empty game object called dead cam, which I have put way up high and I've rotated the face down. So it's actually looking down and it's, it's way up there. You can see it's pretty far away. Now, um, because I'm doing this, it also um, is very, it really much, it slows my game down quite a bit because I'm not addressing those errors um, and there's a lot of problems with the way I've exited the game. But um, we do show that's working, and uh, now we can go into how that camera works. What I've done on the main camera um, is I have put this little dead cam uh, variable, and I've dragged that transform there. So whenever it dies, it knows it's going to jump to that, uh, that empty, empty game object, basically, right here. And in our script, all we've really done on our follow cam script is we have added this public transform dead cam so that's where we're bringing in that uh, dead cam empty game object um, and then what we're doing is we're adding this originally we had this fixed update where we're just cycling through the camera types and we're saying if the rig is not null so remember one of our camera types was a rig and our target is not null so that's you know that was also the player itself um, as long as those are true, they're not null, then we're going to go ahead and go through whatever cam is available. But if, you know, if all of these end up being null, then the last option is we're going to use rig cam, which originally we just said use a rig. But what I've done is repurposed rig cam. And now I say um, pass in the rig, which is on the player. That's a public thing we got from one of our old variables here. I'll expand this region to show rig was something we just dragged in. Um, we can now drag in multiple rigs, and our rig cam is going to point to um, dead cam. So if the player's dead, um, all the references are missing. Now we're going to go to dead cam, and dead cam now takes this transform, the rig transform, and we're setting its transform of the camera to that rig's transform and its position and rotation. So those, both of those factors. So I rotated it down. I moved it really far up. Um, on the y-axis um, and it's pointing straight down at the field so um, since it's static it's not moving it's actually possible that you it won't see anything when you die because if you play as the player and you move away um, then you're gonna miss uh, it's gonna get outside of the field of that camera and so one thing we could do is have that um, rig you know that dead cam rig uh, move and follow the player uh, by setting it as like a target or something like that. Um, probably other ways you could do that as well, uh, but that's kind of keeping in, in the way we've done things already. Uh, we would just have an update with the position of the player and just be way up um, or wherever you want it to be really. So the next thing that we do want to cover is um, how we take damage. We already kind of covered this and um, how we, because we, we covered giving damage to the enemies and then having them explode when they die. So now we want to actually update our health bars. So the way that's been set up is um, we have the uh, UI element on the prefab. So I'm going to go to this GZ Blazer because that's what I call all my enemy ships. This GZ Blazer, open up the prefab, and you can see I have this enemy stats canvas that I've put on the prefab. So the canvas is the UI element, and the health bar 
is the kind of actually like it's the background for the health bar so the health bar itself um, is is what contains the health and then I have the health is the actual meter um, so that's green um, and one thing about the health meter is it has a um, a source image which is just a little JPEG um, and what I've done on that it's this health bar here um, and I've set all these in, you know I brought in this little JPEG and I set this to texture type default um, and it's 2D uh, I think that was all I had to do. I don't know if I had to do anything else, but I'm pretty sure that was it. Um, and then on the health uh, bar, on this on this uh, health bar, what I did for this was um, I just have uh, no image really. Uh, oh, what I should say is this is the canvas. This is an image on the canvas. So the way I did this was I went to, you know, right, right click. And I uh, first for the canvas, I went to UI and then we went to canvas and then for the for the health bar so that's for the whole canvas I call it enemy stats um, and then for this health bar uh, I put in a uh, UI and then I did an image and that image I've given a size to and one thing I did do was I made its position anchored here on the anchor you see it says middle middle so this is just saying we're anchoring it to the middle um, and I centered the uh, the actual canvas on right right dead smack in the middle of the player and I'll get to why that's important in just a second but kind of in the middle of the mesh for that um, for that player uh, the health bar what I did on that was I actually uh, raised this up on the Y a little bit um, and you could change this around as much as you like to and then I made it about 5 wide and 0.75 tall so if you change these numbers, you know, you're going to see a bit of a difference. I don't know if I could like, uh, yeah, I made it like 0.75 tall. You can make it 0.5. Um, it'll be a little bit narrower. Um, and you'll see this health bar is actually taller than that. So now because I did that, so we'll just leave that at 0.75. Um, but the health itself um, has an, so, oh, and the health bar, let me not jump ahead here. The health bar has a color. So let's take this health real quick and move this down. But you can see the health bar. I kind of made it like uh, black, but I also made it a little transparent. Like I gave it about half transparency so that when you're flying around in space, you can see that that's the, the full health bar has a little bit of black. So like when the, you know, when this, um, when the health bar is uh, going down, you have something behind it. And let's say zero for this. Um, so like when this is going down, you'll see the black behind it to say, oh, it's about half or about three quarters. Um, so you can tell how much it is. So on the health, actual health um, amount of health you have, um, the color I made this green, I gave it that source image of a JPEG. And the reason why I did that is because in order for you to get, um, get it to fill and go back and forth, you have to choose a fill method and it has to have an image to do this. So I did horizontal. Uh, I said image type filled, it's simple at first, but it's filled first. Fill method is horizontal, and then you can either do right or left. And you'll see why if we go like this, you do right, that's 100% and that's 0%. So um, we're basically saying, all right, as it gets down to 50%, it's going to be like that, and we're going to drag it over, it's zero, and once they get to zero, it should explode. So um, that's why we did all that. So we've got a canvas, and then we've got an image that has a black color with some transparency and then we've got a child image again that we've added a JPEG to so we can change it to filled horizontal right and you can even do like uh, there's radial you know 360 90 things like that so if you wanted to do like um, you know this like let's say like you wanted to do like breath of the wild how it has those circular endurance ones um, you would want to do like radial uh, 360 and you might do like three of them uh, in a circle you know uh, some way to, to make it look like that so um, but anyway I'm gonna keep it at horizontal because that's the shape I have is this bar and I want to make sure it's right so in the script for the enemy ships we actually have this UI element this um, uh, let's go up to um, our health which we've set at 500 F for these ships and now we're doing 250 damage each because if we shoot them twice and they die that's 250 damage um, but our max health right at start, we're setting that max health equal to health. 
Um, so that's what we're, we're doing there. But one of the things we're doing is, I think on, yeah, here we go. So one of the things you may have noticed is that the UI, the green, the green bars are always above the ship from our perspective. So even if the enemy ship looks like it's flying upside down compared to us, or it's facing away or first facing left or right, um, we are simply saying um, UI.transform.rotation equals player rotation. Because the camera is going to be fairly close to, to, um, to our rotation. Um, so the UI looks okay there. But in reality, so it's not going to be perfect. If the player is rotated down, then the UI on the ships is also going to rotate down a little bit and you'll see that UI rotate backwards. So what's going on is this UI here is actually um, going to be always kind of, a, let's say, uh, right here on the health bar. Uh, let's see, because what, what did I give it? I gave it UI. Yeah, I got the canvas UI. Um, so canvas is the UI. I used the whole canvas. Uh, was like I was thinking if I just did the health bar, that wouldn't work um, because then it would actually just be rotating on the canvas and that wouldn't make any sense. So yes, I used the whole canvas and I'm saying this canvas, its rotation is going to match the player. So it might rotate like this. Um, so if my player is going like this, no matter where the ship is, its rotation is going to match the player's rotation. So no matter which angle you're at, it's going to match. The only way to actually make it look perfectly up and down is to actually have its rotation match the camera. Um, but since I already had the player in there as a target, I added that to make it match the player. Um, and it makes it seem a little more stylistic, but it really shouldn't be that way um, because uh, it can make it confusing if your camera is off from your player. It's going to make those elements kind of shift a bit and it won't look right but um, I didn't mind the shift a little bit I kind of thought it looked neat um, from certain angles it just depends on the style if you always want it to be flat facing the camera make sure you're making it match the camera's rotation um, but even then um, that's not going to be always great there's probably better ways of optimizing that like for example the size isn't changing so when the ship is really far away you may not even want to see it um, or if it's really, really close, it's going to be huge and you may want to shrink it down a bit. So if you want it to always be the same size, um, no matter where they're at, so you could always like, you know, further away enemies have larger uh, UIs, um, you'd have to change that and add some values to shrink it or scale it down. So um, those are just some considerations to think about. Um, but then what we're doing, oh, and I, my fly, remember my, my AI is not very smart. It takes a long time to figure out where it's going. Uh, for now, what I did is I went ahead and I just cheated. And I used the method for cheat is really just, where's my custom method at? Cheat is just saying transform.lookat. So we're ignoring all the physics and just having the object look at us and shoot because I was trying to get it to kill us fast. It takes too long for all the enemies with their AI, they're too slow. Um, so I wanted it to kill us pretty quick. So I have this cheat, which basically is just look at, instead of using the physics and intelligence, it's just pointing it right at the player. Um, and so finally, um, we'll go, let's go back to the uh, damage uh, function that I have here. So that damage function is taking, again, this is, we did this last time for our, for our explosions and things like that, but the damage function is now saying um, the health UI, which is the image for that um, that we have. So not the canvas. The canvas was just for getting the rotation of the, the UI element. The image for the health UI is the actual fill, the bar that fills up the, the health bar. Um, this health UI dot fill amount, this is the variable we're using, is now equal to our health, our current health, minus or divided by the max health. So if we had 500 and we took 250 damage, it's going to be half. Um, and then we have all this other code, you know, this is all, this is the only thing we changed. That's all we added for this damage. Um, and then we still have all of our code for when we damage the, uh, the ship um, and uh, destroy it. So that's it for the enemy ship. Now, the same thing applies to the player. The player has this same exact code. I've added the same thing. You might say, well, if it's duplicate, is that kind of, you're, you're duplicating that code on the player ship. Is there a better, better way of doing that? And the answer is yes, there is. You could actually have a single piece of code that is an abstract that has that damage on it. Um, and then the, the ship, the enemy ship and the player ship can both use that code in their own class. If they, if they become, if they derive instead of a, the mono behavior, they were to derive from an abstract class of ship. And you know, you could say that abstract class uh, has to have um, 
damage on it. So anyway, um, so I won't go over the code for that because it literally is exactly the same. We even have like the UI and the health UI, and we're doing the same thing there. Except for the player, we are just we're just using it instead from the scene, and we have the UI on the scene. And one other thing I did was, oh, I forgot to mention this. It's pretty important on that canvas for this G, uh, GZ Blazer. Um, that canvas needs to be set to world space. So here, that canvas, it, it'll say screen space or camera overlay. It needs to be world space. Because if it's not, then that, that canvas is actually not going to appear uh, correctly. Uh, in the world space, you need it to be in the world space, so it's actually following the ships in the 3D world. Um, but otherwise, on our UI camera for the player, it's okay that it's actually in the screen space overlay. So this is actually going to be like a UI from the camera's perspective, not in the world. And so what we've done is on the player, just like we did with the GZ Blazer, the player, we've added in that health UI health image. I didn't even add in the canvas uh, because nothing needs to be done with the canvas. It's always going to be an overlay. So we don't need to worry about that. We just have the health UI and then the health UI is getting that bar um, which is, we'll go down here and focus on it. Um, you can see the bar right there. And so uh, that UI is taking that health bar here, health, and it's, it's also filled and we're shrinking it down. So I think that's everything that I've covered um, for, for today's video. Um, and oh yeah, we went over the camera, we went over how we could do a UI um, for tracking our health and how to set that up in the 3D world and just on our player as well. Um, and so that was it for today. Thank, I wanted to thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit like below and I hope to see you next time.